Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video I wanted to do a Valentine's Day look. It is Brandon's favorite day of the year, not mine. Mine is Halloween. <laughs> but if I didn't give Valentine's Day the same time and attention I gave to Halloween, he would never let me hear the end of it. So I wanted to put together three Valentine's Day looks. This is actually the more like middle of the road of the two. I have two more, one that's really bold and one that's kind of wearable. So make sure to subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date on when those come out and see all the fun stuff I'm posting. And before I get into the video, I just wanna let you know, since I was working with really reds and things that would mess around with the under eye, I did do my eyes first. And just so it didn't take forever, I did kick it into voiceover. So the beginning of the video will be a voiceover, but I promise once we get through the eyeshadow, I come back and I talk to you guys because I don't love voiceovers. I feel like I'm just kind of here. So thank you very much for watching and let's get right into it. So I already primed the eyes off camera and starting with the shade Universal in the Morphe 35O palette, I'm taking that on a Morphe M504, a very fluffy brush, and I'm taking that all the way in the crease and I'm even diffusing it up to the brow bone. Now this shade is the lightest in the palette, so there really isn't a white shade for a matte brow bone highlight, but since I am going so dark on the eyes, I really don't mind it. So I do just use that to define the crease and blend that up. Then going in with the shade Orb, which is a little bit darker and with a little more of an orangey undertone, on a smaller crease brush, I'm just taking that into the actual socket of the eye and then going back in with that first shade, I'm buffing it out. Now you're gonna notice a lot of times I'm going back in with previous shades to dust it out. Now this is the shade Ablaze, which is a nice true orange, just to give me a little bit more warmth in the crease before I go in with the reds. And then once again, I'm going in with a fluffier brush and the initial blending shades just to make a really smooth diffused line. Next, I'm taking the shade In The Zone and I'm taking that on a very pointy crease brush from Sigma. I believe this is the E45, I'll link it in the description box, but it is a very true brown and I'm building that up very slowly and then diffusing it out with a fluffy brush with some of the previous shades on it. Then taking Muddy, which is a chocolate brown with a little bit of like a purple undertone, I'm taking that on that same very, very pointy Sigma brush and really using that to intensify the crease. And then once again, I'm taking those same initial shades on a fluffy brush and blending it out. Now for this, I'm actually using three shades. This is Wiz, Muddy, and Brunette, which are a combination of a neutral gray, a black, and a chocolate brown. Now by alternating between these shades, it's really allowing me to control the tone of the darkness. Now I didn't want it to be super warm or super cool, which is why I blended the gray with the brown, and I shied away from using just a straight black because I didn't want it to be super intense. For this eye, I really wanted it to be nice and gradual and warm. Next, going back in with a blaze, that orange color, I'm just gonna diffuse that over those three dark shades. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to add a little bit more warmth again without blending away any of that deep color because we have such nice definition in the crease. We don't wanna lose that by going over it with a shade that's too, too light. Next, the shade Fire, which is the true red of the palette. I'm taking that color all the way over everything we've done just to really start to warm it up before I go in with the shimmering red shade. Now the purpose of this is just to kind of intensify that orange and we didn't want it to go super red super quickly because that's when things tend to get muddy. So by gradually turning the orange red and building up that warmth, it allowed us to have a lot more control over what we were doing. There's a lot of blending that goes into this. Next, taking Chestnut, which is again a chestnut brown, I'm just gonna define the crease a little bit more and place that in the outer V. And then I'm gonna take Brave, that chocolate shade from before, just to continue to build up that intensity on the outer V. And as usual, I'm taking the other shades we started with and blending. And finally, we're taking a little bit more fire and we are stamping that all over the lid. 
And then we're mixing in Ruby, which is the shimmering red of the palette. Now, I first started it dry. I didn't love how it was performing, so I tried it wet, and it still wasn't giving me the intensity I wanted, so I ended up going in with my finger, which ended up taking it where I wanted it to go. And then just to match it, I actually intensified it and went through the same steps, even though I knew I was gonna end up going with my finger, just so that it matched up perfectly. Then, going in with Pure, which was a champagne gold shade, I'm gonna take that just over the inner portion of the eye. And the purpose of this is it's gonna diffuse that red and make it a little bit more of a bronzy red and make it a little more fiery. And then using a Neutrogena wipe, I just clean up the under eye and go into the face. So since the eye is gonna be really bold, I am gonna to wanna to make sure that the skin looks flawless. So I'm going to start with a little bit of the Becca First Light Priming Filter. It's the purple one just because this purple adds this just beautiful radiance to the skin. And normally, like you know, I am not a fan of radiance because radiance means oily. But with this, it's just, it brightens the complexion so well that everything that you layer on top just feels so much smoother. And to blur out my pores, I'm gonna take the Clean Slate Timeless Primer from Tarte that I use all the time. And I'm just going to press that into all of the pores. I, whenever I start with the eyes, I always forget to wet my beauty blender, so I'll be right back. Today I'm going to be going in with the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. I've been really liking this lately, and it plays really well with other concealers and stuff. Like, I love my Fenty, I love my Dior, but they don't work with every foundation, concealer, combo. They are foundations. They don't work with every concealer combo, so I do... When I'm playing around with like certain concealers, I do prefer this foundation. For concealer, I'm going to be taking the Radiant Creamy Concealer from NARS in the shade Canel, which is light 2.75. Now for me, this one blends in really nicely, but I find that it's not quite as brightening as some of my other concealers because this one really does play well with the foundation. It doesn't give me quite a drastic bright, which is good because with such a bold eye, I don't like when the skin is super dramatic with the brightness. So I do tend when I do more of an intense eye look to cancel that out with a little bit more of like a natural skin because I don't want to be like too theatrical over the top, which is weird because me and extra kind of just goes together. And I'm just gonna set that down with my Dermablend Translucent Powder. And again, because we do want like more of a soft, natural skin, I'm gonna be setting the rest of the face with my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder in 03 Natural. Normally I would go in with a MAC Studio Fix Powder or something with a little more coverage, but this is a really nice soft powder for just setting down and you know, making sure things aren't gonna move, but it's not gonna add a drastic amount of extra coverage because again, we don't want a super, super full coverage look today. Then I'm just going to finish up the eyes and then move on to skin. So to start with the eyes on a To start with the eyes on a pencil brush, I'm gonna start with Tan, this shade right here. And I'm just going to take that on the entire lower lash line and connect it to where I kind of flared out the shadow up top.
And once we've connected that on a very fluffy brush, taking that same shade, we're just gonna dust that from where we just deposited the color into the crease, just to diffuse any harsh lines and make it a little less drastic where those colors meet because we don't want it to look like an oversight that we just you know slapped on a lower lash line afterwards. We want it to look seamless. Then on a smaller brush, we are going to take Brave, the very red terracotta chocolatey color. And we're gonna run that very close to the lower lash line. And we're gonna stop that about two thirds of the way into the eye because we don't want it to extend too far out to dwarf the eye, we wanna help open it up. Then taking the Full Spectrum Liner from Makeup Geek in the shade Plumeria, which is again that very pretty berry color, I'm just gonna take that into the waterline. Then going back on that pencil brush where the liner and the Brave shade meet, we are going to take a little bit of heat, which is this very, very soft orange, but it's still orange, and we're gonna use that to blend it out. Then very close to the lash line, we're going to take Brunette, this really dark brown, and we're gonna take that just on the very, very like outer third, to contour today since this is kind of a Valentine's look and it's very like candlelight and soft I'm gonna be going a little darker with the contour than I normally do so instead of going into the lighter two shades I'm gonna be going into the middle and darker of the contour shades from the Kat Von D shade and light palette and to brighten I'm gonna take the same mixture of all three shades that I always do for bronzer today, I'm gonna to be going into the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. This is the Milk Chocolate. And I'm taking that on a very fluffy brush because since we did go so hard on the contour, I don't wanna go super heavy on the bronze. Since this is an evening look, again, we do want something a little darker for the blush. So I'm gonna be going into my Morphe 9N palette and I'm gonna be mixing these two shades right here. As always, before highlight, I'm going to set my face with the Oil Control Setting Spray from Scandinavia. So I'm just going to pop on mascara, lashes, and liner off camera. I'm gonna be doing the Pure Pro Lashes in the shade, in the style bombshell, and I'll be right back. Okay, so these lashes are definitely a little intense, but what I like about them is that they are very flirty and very wispy and fluttery but they're just like subtle enough. I mean, I know they're not subtle, they're really long, but that you could still kind of see what's going on on the eyes behind it. I didn't want a pair that was super full and super like voluminous that you're gonna miss everything we have going on on the eye. But these are definitely what I would call a holiday lash. Like they are really bold and really intense, but for Valentine's Day, no one's gonna say anything if your lashes touch your eyebrows. Now, because we do have a lot of reds going on and a lot of bronze and a nice deep face that's gonna look really nice with candlelight, we are gonna go a little bit, you know, I'm, I, I guess bold <laughs> on the highlight, but I definitely wanted to have more of that rosy peachy undertone. So I'm gonna start off with Peach Goddess from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. This is just a really pretty peachy color and I'm just gonna pack that on the high points of the face. And just to amp that up a bit and make it a little more rosy, I'm gonna be taking Precious Petals from Wet n Wild, which has a really nice rosy undertone, and I'm just gonna put that right on top. And for the inner corners today, I'm gonna to be taking High Five, which was a limited edition Super Shock Cheek from ColourPop, and I'm just gonna take that into the inner corners. Now I'm kind of going off book a little bit because something is telling me to skip the glitter, which I know for me is like a huge no-no and I never skip the glitter, but I'm kind of liking this as kind of an all shimmer look without any glitter. So I am going to skip the glitter, glitter and move on to lip. Now I just quickly lined my lips with the Jaunted Blue Lip Liner in Spice, 
which is just really a soft neutral. And for the lip today, I'm gonna be going in with Unicorn Blood from Jeffree Star, but instead of going in with the matte liquid lip, I'm gonna be taking the Lip Ammunition, which is, you know, the satin cream lipstick formula. I love this color. It's probably my favorite color lipstick of all time, but in the winter, especially in February, I can't really get away with doing an all matte lip because my lips do get really dry. So I'm gonna take this formula instead. And the last thing we're gonna do is set the face. I'm gonna be taking the MAC Fix Plus in the rose scent, cause I'm, you know, feeling very Valentine's-y and I'm just gonna set down the face with this. And that's the finished look. This is, I'm gonna say, the middle of my three Valentine's Day looks. This is gonna go up first, but I will be doing one that's a little more natural and one that is a little more like super bold, cause this is pretty bold, especially once you get into the lashes. But, I mean, if you've been on my channel for any amount of time, you know that for me, this is kind of every day. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!